Hi, this is Bob Miller over at the Bob Miller Realty Group. Today I'm going to try and talk about operating expenses. Now, I can easily go on for a half hour on this subject, but I'm going to try and cut it down to just a few minutes and cover the main issues. And if you want to be more specific with your questions, give me a call. But jumping right into it, we're going to use the example of, say, an office building or retail building. It doesn't really make much difference. Or it could be a, an industrial building for that matter. But when you're talking about operating expenses, these are CAM expenses or pass-throughs. It's common area maintenance. You'll hear that phrase. Um, examples of what these common area maintenance ex expenses are, are the electrical, the real estate taxes, the insurance, and that's property and casualty insurance for the building itself. The tenant is always going to want to get the insurance for the inside of their own space themselves and their, te their tenant responsibility space. The sewer and water bill for the building. The janitorial. There's always janitorial in the common area maintenance. If it's a retail building, you're talking about uh, parking lot sweeping or something to that effect. Um, the tenant space, the operating expenses might include the removal of the garbage from the interior of the tenant space. You're going to have a maintenance reserve on a well-managed property that's going to take care of things like parking lot striping, um, uh, repairs of the HVAC, landscaping issues. You have a management fee that's in there. Now, even if the landlord's managing it themselves, they're entitled to be compensated for the expenses associated with managing that property. Um, because that has a direct effect on their net, net operating income. Now, there's three different ways uh, and three different types of leases on here and how these expenses are handled are different in each one of these cases. But you have the three different types of leases. You have the triple net, you have a full service gross and a modified gross. All of them are subject to an annual reconciliation. Uh, landlord can't estimate exactly in advance what all of these costs are going to be because as you know, the taxes always change, insurance costs always change, the water bill might go up slightly, that always changes. So they're always going to give an annual reconciliation at the end of the year and give, either give a bill to the tenant or give them a credit for future payment of tenant approval, excuse me, of operating expenses. Um, the annual uh, reconciliation is part of that. You have how that is handled. It could be either on a base year or an expense stop when it comes to the full service or modified gross. Meaning you have X number of dollars. It's going to say so in the lease. It has X number of dollars, and if the expenses go over that, then the tenant is going to pay for their pro rata share of that overage. So if they occupy 10% of the building, and the overage is $1,000 for the entire project, the tenant's responsibility of that is $100. Um, you always, I would suggest if you're a tenant to review any prior year's reconciliation when you're going through this and the landlord's making representations as to what this operating expenses are and what your uh, pro, pro rata share of it and responsibility of it is, make sure that they're doing it correctly to begin with so you don't have any surprises in the subsequent years of the lease agreement because of possible mismanagement in prior years. So get a copy of that reconciliation, maybe even attach it as an exhibit to the lease so that there's no misunderstandings. Now, that's it on a quick summary. If you have any questions, or feel free to pop me a line. You can reach